subject to arrest. You are an American citizen and you shall be arrested for having freedom of speech and using the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. The Constitution is a very dangerous concept. Do not dare try to invoke the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. For anybody that may not know what the symbol of Don't Tread on Me looks like, uh, basically the most common symbol, the one that would most routinely be seen, is the one where you see a coiled up rattlesnake. And uh, that coiled up rattlesnake is ready to strike, but the symbolism there is, you know, if if you don't mess with me, I'm not going to mess with you. Well, again, I think that when I, when I think about that don't tread on me, I think about the, the flag, the revolutionary flag. I think about tyranny of government that uh, hoisted on a people from a very long distance away. Again, that idea of government being close to the people. I do this for my children. I do it for my kids. I honestly do. I don't do it. I don't do it for any other reason than for my kids. I would like to see them live in a, at least a little bit freer of a society than what we have right now. You know, not being overly reactionary. Personally, I would like to see you know, you know people just band together and say, "No, we're not going to do this." And if push comes to shove, if they push you, you know, do you do you allow them to push you or do you shove back? It's up to us to fix the mess. Yes, we thought we could trust them. But it didn't get this bad overnight. It got this bad because the citizens, not everyone, but some citizens were content to sit in their lazy boy chairs with the remote control trusting that government will take care of them. And while that may have worked at some time, it never has worked very well through the long course of things. So I want to encourage everybody to do your part to take back America. You might, it might be as simple as just giving a civics lesson to your friends, neighbors, and relatives, but when people hear the truth, they can recognize it. And there's no reason we have to throw away the principles that made us the greatest nation on earth. We need to get organized on the local level, precincts. Organize in the precincts, organize so that you can turn out voters who believe your way uh, is, the, is the main step in turning things around. Uh, during a presidential campaign, the nine months before that, is not the time to start trying to get enough people out to support your candidate. It's important for citizens to get involved. Become a candidate for public office or find a candidate for public office that you support and get engaged in electing people who will uh, express a devotion to a commitment to the clear principles of the United States Constitution. I have never seen my constituents and people across Missouri so engaged. And I'm sure it's like that in all the states. The, the most important people that you can elect that know and understand the Constitution and the resp their responsibility to protect you is your county sheriff and your governor. If you can get those two people on board with protecting you from tyrants, We'll win this battle, and we'll keep this battle uh, and these tea parties peaceful. If not, uh, we're going to watch our, con our country continue to die, and instead of throwing tea in the harbor, we're going to start throwing politicians. That is in Article 1, Section 8 in the enumerated powers of the Constitution, and if the federal government says they're going to cut off highway funding, for example, for a state, then we should be well within our rights to say that, okay, well, we're going to cut you off then of all. Uh, federal tax uh, receipts uh, until you release those uh, funds that we have given you to fulfill your enumerated powers. But the good people of America through the Patriot Uprising, the Tea Party movement, have banded together and made it clear to our government that we just aren't taking any more. We're not going to sit back and allow you to perpetrate these things against the American people. We are not going to allow you to just ignore this document called the U.S. Constitution. And it is the people of America, not the politicians, the people of America, have stopped health control and tax and charade. The Founding Fathers created a country in which the local level is to be the most 
uh, powerful force on us. If, if, if government is going to have any kind of uh, uh, effect on us, particularly it should come from the local level, because that means you can sit down with your local county commissioner, your local city councilman over a cup of coffee or something and say, you know, Harold, i got a problem with this, and, uh, and you can talk to them. And uh, if they don't do what you uh, want them to do, then you can organize to try to take them out of office. A larger than expected turnout today for a Tea Party protest. People are upset with the Obama administration. And this time, in addition to signs denouncing government spending, protesters were encouraged to bring their guns. Well, I think there's a lot of people, myself included, until about a year ago, that basically just trusted our government and believed that they were actually doing the, what was best for us. The protesters say the pending health care legislation is a big reason why they're upset. But they're also angry about gun control, big bailouts, and tax increases. They say it's time they're hurt. Well, I, I would call it sensitizing people to the, to the problem. You have different levels here. There are some people who understand this problem, and then there are others who don't understand the specifics of it, but they know the source of it. And Congress, this problem is located in Congress. And then there are some down below who will understand not only that, but they say, well, I know a solution to it, or I know a direction for a solution. We have to work through the states or what have you. And then you have a vast mass way at the bottom who are feeling the economic and social screws being turned on them. And the one thing they know is they're not responsible for this. They didn't do this. Somebody else did it. And now they're looking around to see who it was. And it has to be people in positions of power that did it. And so they're looking at the financial community, they're looking at the big businessmen, they're looking at the big politicians, they say, you people are responsible in some way for this mess that's coming on me, that's being dumped on me. Their first instinct is to ask them to correct it, because they've been told all along that Washington has all the answers, right? But now they're realizing Washington does not have the answers. We get hope, we get change, and we don't actually get any hope or change, right? That was the whole mantra of the Obama campaign. I leave Mr. Obama aside, right, without criticizing him in particular, but that's the idea of all of these political campaigns. You put in this new fellow and things will change. And people have swallowed that stuff long enough. They realize it isn't true. It doesn't change. At that point, they're going to stop, number one, looking to Washington, begin to look at the other alternatives, which are the states, and I hope the second point is they're going to recognize that if change is going to occur, they have to make it occur. That is, the individual person has to make it occur. He has to become directly involved in this. Self-government is not a spectator sport. It's a contact sport. You have to get on the field, put on the uniform, and you know, go out there and play the game. And if that means working with an alternative currency and learning how to use it as a businessman, you have to do it. If that means becoming part of a militia unit so that you can deal with whatever the local emergencies are, you have to do it. They're not, Nancy Pelosi is not going to come down from Washington and do this for you. I am sovereign. I have a right to life. I have right to freedom of speech, and I know that I have these rights. I don't ask anybody for permission. I do not look to some higher authority to determine whether or not I have these rights. Uh, God made the people, the people made the states, and the states made the federal government, and that's the way the power flows. The, the people in this country, the average citizen, the guy sitting in front of a television set uh, after having dinner at night, um, they know something's wrong. They can feel it in their gut. They know that there's, there's something just not right with the world. Um, as, as, as Morpheus said in The Matrix, he said, you know, it's the, it's the splinter in the corner of your mind. There's something there, they just can't put their finger on it. It's our responsibility as citizens, as people who uphold the Constitution, to, to give them the option, to give them the ability to take the red pill and uh, see how far the rabbit hole goes. Um, and when they do, uh, when you start making people awake and aware of what's going on, uh, they become uh, excited themselves and become true grassroots people themselves and want to spread the message. And I think that's happening to great effect right now. When you evaluate the efforts and the results of the Patriot Uprising, the Tea Party movement, and you ask yourselves, have we made measurable progress in reasonable time? The answer to that is a resounding yes. Absolutely. We are making major progress. Politicians 
are scared like they've never been scared before. And that is exactly where we want them. We want politicians to be in a constant state of, of fear, not physical fear, but fear of not being reelected, fear of the people holding their feet to the pot fire, fear of the people actually paying attention to and watching what they do. That's where we have the politicians right now.